Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Today, I am just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. I visit with a company called Acme Aero. They make suspension systems, many different components for aircraft, and they come from the, the racing industry. I give you a full shop tour coming up right now. We got a windows down. On my way to Acme Aero, I took a moment and sort of strolled through the neighborhood. Just outside of Charlotte, Mooresville, North Carolina is home to NASCAR. So a lot of the major companies are based right here in the same industrial park as Acme Aero. So make sure that you don't miss out, just be there. We're taking our shot, bring what you got, we're going on. Maybe on a return trip, I can knock on some of these doors and take a tour. Welcome to Acme. I'm Matt. This is Eric. Come on a tour. So this is where the carbon fiber magic happens. This is Tim Nye. He's the resident carbon fiber guru extraordinaire. He's making some uh, race car parts and pieces right now. Over here we basically lay up different carbon parts. Uh, we go from everywhere, everything from a mold. Um, we'll start with a rough uh, pattern or plug it's called. Um, and basically we'll make uh, fiberglass or carbon molds depending on what the application's for. And then so um, we'll, we'll lay up our part um, with different amount of layers of carbon. Um, whether it's, you know, it could be up to a quarter inch thick, thicker. Um, some stuff can be up to only 30,000 so it's really neat different parts all the time so I'm just laying up actually a little battery hold tie down mount right here it's really neat that's a pre-preg part so right? yeah pre-preg carbon and tell people the difference between a pre-preg and a wet layup so basically pre-preg material the uh, the material already has the resin in it and it's actually stored here in the freezer um, you'll see different basically the resins in it so it's always curing in a sense so you have to keep it frozen so that way um, it has a probably about a, a year to two years depending on the material of um, a li lifespan and then once you once you cook it um, different materials so basically 200 to 250 degrees um, an hour to two hour cure schedule um, but yeah it's pretty neat neat stuff we have a smaller oven here, uh, and then for the big parts, uh, entire wings, fuselages, uh, there's a large oven out back, um, and it's all uh, got temperature controlled uh, for different areas and different zones. So this is our CNC lathe. Uh, we make a, a majority of our stuff in-house right now. It looks like he's working on a, a shaft for a tail wheel. Um, so he'll cut the threads on both sides. Uh, this was a shock shaft. We do, uh, all of our bushings, it's like he's got bushings, second generation bushings going on right here. So pretty much anything that we can think of, um, we can spit out. Uh, this is a top cap for, for our uh, tail wheel and our shocks. Um, so it threads on like so. Then ultimately once that gets threaded on, that gets welded there. So there's dual internal fail safes just right here. So yeah, this is a, uh, where a lot of the stuff happens. One of our CNC. What's that? One of our CNC. Yeah, this is one of our CNC machines. We have two more across town. Uh, CNC lay then a CNC mill across town. Um, so there's not a whole lot we can accomplish. So one of the QC processes we have in um, any material handling that we have, we've got several processes. Um, this is a, uh, a lint checker. So what we do is after the CNC has uh, cut it and threaded it, we make sure, come in and touch off and make sure that it meets our specs whatever length we want. Uh, if we're doing custom or, or a spec shaft, uh, this is just one of the QC processes. We're taking our shot, bring what you got. We're going all the way to the top. We will hear the sound of one million people screaming our names when we're backstage. We'll play loud, surfing the crowd. Everybody's jumping around. Yeah, that's the place where I wanna be. Going on stage, headline on the Saturday night. So a lot of people want to know how molds are made uh, for carbon fiber and composite uh, industry. This is obviously uh, one method. Uh, it's an Onstrude 
five axis CNC, which is actually made local uh, here in Troutman, North Carolina, right up the road. Uh, so what happens is, is you take this rim board, uh, different thicknesses and you chemically bond it with glue uh, together, stack it up to kind of get your generic shape. Mr. Steve Long is our resident uh, pattern mold making engineer guru. Uh, and so what happens is you take your 3D model, your solid model, your rim board, and then you route it out to the shape uh, that you want from your solid model. And then we can show you what this will turn into uh, to make the composite part. So the next process after the Onstrude router is this assembly here becomes one uh, and it's gel coated, epoxy primered. Uh, then it's gone through a QC process to make sure that it's met all the dimensions. Uh, and uh, then you can start pulling your carbon fiber parts off of the molds just like this. So after you lay up a part off of the mold that, that we showed you, it goes into a climate control booth like this and I'll take you on a quick tour. So this design was designed by a good friend of ours, Mike Moore. So if y'all looking for a climate control bait booth, he's your guy. Uh, but these has different zones, different thermal couples uh, for the zone. Uh, once you bag it, it's all got vacuum. Um, so you pull vacuum on your parts. Uh, down throughout the chamber, you can block off for different heat zones, heat station. You can use a full fuselage cure in here, a wing, or a small part. Um, it's all based on the thermal couples and the temperature range. So other than everything, what, what specifically do you do back here? So this is our hard fab shop. Uh, this is uh, the mastermind, uh, Mr. Steve Levitt. He runs the, the fab shop back here. And uh, everything that we do is jigged up. He's uh, the mastermind again, like I said, uh, behind making all the jigs and fixtures and uh, world renowned fabricators. So uh, this is his little claim to fame back here. Uh, so everything we do, uh, this is uh, this is a frame we built the jig for. It's a rear end that uh, is going into a race car. Everything, like I said, is one off. It gets jigged up even if it's just making one. Uh, that's a roll cage jig, uh, but all the, uh, the tools and equipment you need to fabricate lives in this area right here. A lot of people uh, wonder where our background come from. Uh, this is kind of the, the industry standard of how we started is uh, the suspension side. Uh, on the race car industry, uh, in the race car industry. So uh, this is kind of our natural habitat, our background. Everything in the aircraft industry just led from the racing industry is how we fixture, how we manufacture, how we weld, uh, everything it derives from the racing industry. Uh, this is a prime example. This is our, our uh, one of the fixtures that we're, a brand new fixture that we're building to do arms with. Um, so this is uh, adjustable. Uh, forward and back, plus or negative, uh, up and down from zero all the way to, to 12 inches. So everything is modeled, mocked up, CNC, all bolted together. If we have an issue, we can come back and put it on the jig table to see what moved and, and where it moved. If you're finding value in this video, hit the like button on this video, and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like Airworks, Kit Plane Parts, Acme Aero, Edge Performance Engines, and Viking Aircraft Engines. And be sure to check out the links in the description below for special offers from our affiliates. Let's jump back in. And here's a special offer from Kit Plane Parts. Free shipping. Use the code MAYEXPERIMENTAL. Right. Okay, so moving more into the uh, aviation side of the business. Um, first off, since we're, we're passing through here, what exactly is this here? And we'll go into more detail, I'm sure, later, but just a, a quick preview what is this so this is a, a drop fixture and what we do is once the FAA gives you a prescribed test plan uh, if you're doing certified stuff uh, we have accelerometers uh, we have load sensors um, we have high-speed cameras and what it does is you take it up to the elevation or the height that you want you load it up with how much weight you want and it's got a release pin and you pull it and it drops so it's it's a drop fixture um, so you, we can configure it however we want. Uh, we do a lot of our experimental parts this way. This is one way we test it. Uh, this is one way we do a validation from our dyno out to real world testing before we actually put it on an airplane. It goes through several uh, iterations of testing. This is just one way that we test. Okay, 
Now the suspension room. Yeah, so this is where the magic happens, right? Um, this is our suspension room. Um, Goose right now is working on some builds. Uh, all the stuff goes out on the table that we're actively working on, so that's where the queue is. Um, here, I'll show you. We have shafts in every quarter inch increment from 24 all the way up to 36 to make overall lengths. Um, everything gets dynoed in here. I mean, there's just tons of tons of equipment in here. All right, so another member of the team here. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, my name is Goose. I'm here with Acting Arrow. So I'm the one that's building the shocks here. Uh, Matt and Eric's out in the field, and they're talking to you guys. And when they're putting orders in, it's coming to me. So we're going to show you a little bit today about how we're making stuff, why we went through what we went through, and how we've got to your finished product. So let's talk a little bit about how we determine what we're going to build for your applications. Uh, the history of, of where I've came from is an off-road world. Uh, I look at this airplane stuff as the jumps are a lot longer. That's all. Uh, we still got to take off. We still got to land. So we've took a lot of off-road technology in this backcountry world. You know, there's nothing more aggressive than any more of the off-road stuff that we've came from. So uh, the designs of the pistons, the, the function of the shock is, is super high performance stuff. We've came from the racing world and a lot of the developmental parts that we've used in is came from the racing side. So we manufacture everything from made in America components and manufactured in the States. So we're real proud of that and we like to talk about that. Um, you know, what we do is nothing's off the shelf. You know, to fit in this industry, we've had to be designed custom for every application. So it's it was, it was hard to start with because there's nothing that we could just pull off easy. It was all, let's start from scratch. And, and through that, we've developed far superior parts, I believe, in that application. So um, from the fact that we are a gas charge shock, uh, we're a mechanical spring inside, we're uh, a nice hydraulic piston that we've developed for, for not only taxiing control there, but we're controlling strike through, you know, creek bottoms and, and hard strike through. So, so we're doing a lot hydraulically and mechanically with these components. I think inside of our shock, there's close to 30 parts that we manufacture. Are you going to release it? You're pumping up to release or? Yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead. For those of us who know nothing about shocks and springs, and being that you are a manufacturer, how about you give us a quick tour of a shock system in, in this cutaway? So this cutaway is our Pro Series. Uh, as you can see inside, we've got two different springs. There's a separator here. The thing that we like about our setup is we're a gas charge shock, but we have a separator piston between the oil and the gas. One of the questions we get a lot about of checking gas pressure and, and worrying about a high pressure situation, you know, as these shocks work in compression, they're separating. And you can see this divider piston, when the shock goes into compression and it's, and it's pulling everything out, we're actually decreasing pressure. So everyone worries about in a compression strike about ramping up to a high force. We're actually losing uh, PSI as it travels through. So, um, so as it's as it's traveling down, you're losing volume, which is a sense losing its resistance. Gaining volume. You're, you're gaining we're as it gaining goes down. We're gaining volume in this gas chamber, which is Above. creating. Above. Okay. Yep. So we're we're losing a, a psi as it's traveling. So, I see. Uh, we still. That's why we start at 250, and uh, as we're in full compression, it travels down to about 150. So we've had a lot of guys ask us about serviceability and when to send stuff back or or repairs, any of those items. So what we do like about our shock is it is serviceable and, and you can invest in it and maintain this thing throughout the years. It's meant to last and, and it's meant to grow with your needs. Uh, so between our seal heads, uh, so we're a triple redundancy seal package in this. Uh, we've got a bunch of, of really quality O-rings and manufactured seals. Uh, so between the thread end aspect of this and our bodies, and then even some feedback we've had of, you know, we've been in the field for a long time now between, um, you know, guys were just complaining that, hey man, the spacers are hard to put in. You know, my, my fat fingers are getting up here. So we've made some, some changes to spacers that are easier to install, to work with, um, to, to just improvements in performance and longevity of, uh, we were originally, this is more of what we talked about with an off the shelf part, our Schrader valves were just an off the shelf and aluminum that was working well for the pressures, but we had troubles in shipping and just, you know, in the field, things getting clobbered. So now we manufacture our own stainless steel shredder. It's a lot stronger. Um, so 
you know, we're all the time making improvements in it. And if you send stuff back for service or anything that we're trying to upgrade performance wise, we can always include the new running changes that we've made throughout the, the time that we've been working on the shock. All right. So if you could summarize what exactly Acme does here, what all that you offer services and products. So Acme Aero as a whole um, is a suspension company in general. We service uh, suspensions from the racing industry all the way up to the military. Um, so as far as the experimental side of the house, we just want to be, uh, we want to be available to anybody in the experimental work world, manufacturers, OEMs, uh, the average person building a Zenith in their garage. Uh, we can manufacture suspension, uh, we can do carbon, uh, we can do uh, any type of fabrication that you need, jigs, fixtures, uh, a lot more than just building suspension. We specialize in suspension, uh, but we want to be accessible for the technologies that we have in this area to be your center point uh, to, to help you navigate the uh, experimental world and, and building airplanes. We're taking our shot, bring what you got. We're going all the way to the top. In a future episode, we return to Acme Aero to show you exactly how one of their shock systems is built, as well as their tailspring assembly. If you haven't already, I invite you right now to subscribe, hit the like button, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And we now have a podcast that can be found on iTunes and Google Play. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Brand new drum.